Good Tuesday afternoon. Thank you for hopping on NCSA Live. I'm David Kamisic, Senior Recruiting Manager here with Next College Student Athlete, joined by Recruiting Manager Kyle Winters. Kyle, it's March 1st. The sun's shining here in Chicago. It's reasonably warm for Chicago. Things are are looking uh, in a really good spot. How, how are you doing on this March 1st? I'm fantastic. This is absolute Midwest golf weather. Happy Mardi Gras to you. Happy uh, Fat Tuesday. Uh, entering solemn time of Lent coming up tomorrow. Can't wait. There we go. So big, big things happening in March. March Madness, golfing, spring sports are kicking off here. So uh, today we're going to focus on a specific topic and then uh, encourage any questions you guys have, whether it be about the topic we're covering or just anything in the, the realm of sports uh, recruiting. Uh, so feel free to interact, whether you're watching us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, whatever network it is that you're uh, connecting with us on. Drop any questions. Uh, we, we like to be challenged. We like this to be interactive. So uh, don't be shy if you have any questions. But uh, as we talked about today, we're going to focus on spring recruiting tips. A uh, big time of the year for uh, the recruiting process, especially for those student athletes that are either wrapping up their winter sports or starting their spring sports season. So we'll kind of take things year by year here, freshmen, sophomore, juniors. Uh, what are a few things that that student athletes should be doing uh, this time of year as we're heading into the spring to uh, make sure we're in a good spot when it comes to the recruiting process? So, um, Kyle, you know, the, the recruiting process is that it's a process. Uh, you hear the analogy. It's not a a sprint it's a marathon that's certainly the case when it comes to recruiting and uh, certainly a lot of things based on your grad year as a student athlete that you can be doing to put yourself in the best position when it comes uh, to the recruiting process so um just talk a little bit about that the importance of, of depending on where you're at just just things that you can be doing there's never too early of a time to, to start thinking about recruiting yes uh, a wise man once said it's uh, a marathon not a sprint in recruiting and, and recruiting uh, exemplifies that as well as anything um, the recruiting process, you know, it's a huge misconception around it that as a student athlete, if you're good enough, college coaches, they're just going to find you. If you go out and play travel ball, college coaches, they're just going to find you. If you go out to college camps, coaches are going to find you. If you go to showcases and so on and so on, the, the misconception is that college coaches are going to find you, which for some people, yeah, absolutely, that's the case. There is a small percentage of student athletes that are so high level or that are in the right place at the right time and coaches do find find them, it does happen. But for the vast majority of student athletes, college coaches, they don't find you. Uh, we, we talk about most sports, the right around about four to seven percent of high school athletes go on to play at the collegiate level. Uh, so that means 95 percent of high school and travel student athletes don't get recruited a lot of it's mostly, mostly because college coaches just never find out who they are. They don't get enough exposure. Coaches just overlook them, and they slip between the cracks. So tens of thousands of kids every year who are good enough and smart enough to play in college don't get that opportunity. So what we talk about is these different recruiting checklists of what student-athletes should be doing starting freshman year, some cases eighth grade, some cases even a little bit younger than that. Um, so they have a guideline. So you guys have a roadmap on what to be doing year by year, this is going to be kind of an overview, but we could go in much more depth on, on what student athletes should be doing. And um, I think the overarching theme will be be proactive. Don't wait for college coaches to just find you because it's not that likely it's going to happen. Okay, so the link there at the bottom, again, our website's got a great kind of checklist to help you kind of keep in the right path in terms of what to be doing with the recruiting process. Think of it as a lot of other things. Uh, you know, you know, buying a, a condo, for example, or buying a house, there's things that you have to do, a checklist that you have to do to knock out certain pieces as you're doing that. The recruiting process is very similar. Uh, it's not something that all of a sudden you just one day turn it on junior year, senior year, and all of a sudden you start getting recruited in all these scholarship options. So again, our website's got a lot of great information on there, kind of lays out that checklist, but we're going to hit on a, a few points here to uh, kick things off. But again, being organized, um, you know, being able to, to stay motivated throughout the recruiting process. There's going to be ups and downs just like anything in life. And again, the earlier you can start, the better spot you're going to be in. So, Kyle, let's start things off with with the freshman class of so those 2025 high school graduates. Um, right now, there's certain restrictions based around the contact that they can be receiving from certain college coaches. But that doesn't mean they should just be sitting back, sitting on their hands, waiting and hoping that things are going to eventually happen. There's things student athletes can be doing to get ahead of the curve right now, even if you are a freshman in high school. Absolutely. For every sport out there, for every collegiate sport, college coaches, they start at the very least identifying student athletes as freshmen in high school in, in most cases. What that means, it could be that they're just 
viewing their profile. They might start following them to keep track of their progress throughout high school. Like David said, there are restrictions on Division I, Division II coaches on when they can actually start reaching out to you as a student athlete. Um, that's not the same. That's not the case for Division three schools, for NAIA uh, schools, for junior colleges. You can have contact with those college coaches really at any time within the recruiting process. Um, and as a student athlete, you can be proactively reaching out to college coaches at any time. So a great first step is filling out recruiting questionnaires for college coaches. So you can typically go to their website directly. You can go through NCSA. We have links to most of um, the college coaches, the college programs, questionnaires that you can go in and fill out that information. Uh, don't, ju don't just do that. Don't just fill out the questionnaire, sit on your hand and say, my work is done. Coaches are going to find me now because I filled out the questionnaire. That's one step. Follow up from there. You should be still working on your profile, should still be um, emailing those coaches because you can be. You can be directing them to your profile. Hopefully, you're starting to put together videos so coaches can start getting an idea of where your starting point is. It's not going to be that you're a finished product and they're not looking for a finished product, but they want to get an idea of your starting point and how you develop throughout the rest of high school. So freshman year, there's plenty you can be doing right now. Even if you don't feel like you're at that peak level, you're not going to be, and that's okay, but it's still a great starting point to just start getting on coaches' radars and setting the stage for the rest of the process. Yeah, that's the beautiful part of starting this process early is you can initiate contact as a student athlete with any college coach in the country as a freshman. Again, those coaches may not be able to personally respond to you. What you're ultimately doing is you're raising your hand. You're showing interest in that program. You're letting that coach know, hey, I'm interested in maybe learning more about your program or attending your school someday. So the more of that you can do early on in the process, the better off you're going to be. You know, If you can put yourself in a situation where you have 25, 30 plus coaches, knowing who you are by the time you're a junior and that direct contact can really start, that's where you're going to put yourself in a position to find the right fit to be able to enjoy the recruiting process and not be stressed out and, and overwhelmed by it. So again, early on, you can take that initiative. I, I have two examples. My nephew's a freshman a baseball player in high school. We got his profile up and running. I have a good buddy of mine from high school whose son is a left-handed pitcher, um, a baseball recruit as well, who's a freshman. Uh, he sent me a message last week that he got his uh, he's got his first follow from a Division I coach. So what that means is there's a Division I coach that is following his profile. So they're following him. They want to continue to see his progression and see that information. So again, it's not just that college coaches aren't doing anything and they're going to say, okay, let's wait till these kids are juniors and start recruiting them. They're building their list of prospects and they're starting to kind of figure out, okay, who are some kids that maybe we want to go out and see, or who are some kids that we want to see some video with, or maybe invite out to a camp at our school to get a closer look at. So again, a lot of things that you can be doing early on, but again, the more initiative you can take, whether well, that's, again, just even researching schools, building a target list of schools that might be of interest to you um, based on location, based on major, based on the size of the school. There's a lot that you can be doing early on as a freshman to, again, set yourself up to be in that position. Because regardless of what sport you're playing, if you're playing for a travel or club team, there are going to be college coaches out this spring, this summer, that are going to be checking out 2025 and 2024 high school grads. That's not something they wait again until junior or senior year to do. By junior or senior year, a lot of these coaches are kind of finalizing that. They're finalizing the top maybe five recruits they're looking at. So, um, again, big step early on, Kyle, for these freshmen. Just be proactive. Start to research the process. Get yourself as educated as you possibly can. For the sophomores, I think it's really a critical time in recruiting, knowing that coming up here in a couple months is when these coaches can start directly contacting you from Division II, Division I schools. So this next three- to six-month window for the sophomore class, in my opinion, is pivotal. Yeah, this is really this is the, the turning point for recruiting. June 15th after sophomore year, for the vast majority of, sp of sports, that's the date when college coaches can start making phone calls, can start emailing you, can start having actual conversations with you. Um, so it's a huge, huge step, huge um, pivot in the recruiting process where coaches go from building those recruiting lists that they've been doing over the last year and a half, two years, to now, in a lot of cases, they're going to start narrowing it down. They're going to take their list they've built over the last two years of 100, 150 student athletes. Um, they're going to start narrowing it down by position, by need, by grad year, but what they're looking for. Um, you know, People talk a lot about camps, and, and camps are a great thing to be doing in your sophomore year and this upcoming summer uh, headed into your junior year. But the last thing is, is a student athlete, as a family, that you want to be doing is spending tens of thousands of dollars going to – every camp in the country, just hoping that 
a coach is going to happen to see you at one of those and then not get anything out of it. So if you're going to be looking into camps, do your research. Make sure it's coaches that are that are following you, that are viewing you, that have uh, seen you before, have identified you as a prospect, that it seems like there may be some interest. Um, do some homework going into those so you can target the right camps for you, that you can go to camps that are going to make sense, that you know this coach already has a built-in interest of you, and it's more relationship building and giving them a chance to watch you in a controlled setting on their campus. Um, so, yeah, camps will be great. That's a, a great event to be doing in this coming, upcoming year as a sophomore, but make sure you're calculated with it and not just trying to go to every camp possible and just hope that something fits. And if there is a school that you are interested in, maybe that coach doesn't already know who you are, if you sign up to go to that camp, shoot them an email beforehand, right? Hopefully you have an updated video, whether it's a highlight video or a skills video that you can send them as well. So maybe they have a chance to check out your video to see what your game or your skills are like. And then if the coach knows that you're at that event or you're at that camp, they're going to be more interested in taking a closer look at you. When coaches are at these camps, these showcases, they're there usually to specifically evaluate a certain student athlete or certain student athletes. They have a list of kids they're there to see. Very similarly, when they go out to a, a travel tournament or a club tournament, they're not just winging it. They're not just showing up and saying, all right, let's see who we can maybe discover as a potential recruit. They're going there with a purpose. At 7 a.m., I'm going to be in field 12 to check out Tommy. And then at 9 a.m., I'm going to field 8 to check out Billy. So they're very strategic and planned in how they organize their recruiting. So, again, as student athletes, as families, it's something that we need to be doing as well. We talked about video, Kyle. Um, certainly, if you don't have a video by the time you're a sophomore, it's really important to do. So whether it's your upcoming season, whether you just finished a season, um, something that you definitely want to get together is have that video. Because, again, when coaches are in our network and they're just looking at these profiles, they need to evaluate a student athlete. So I think video is an important piece of the sophomore year as well. Absolutely. A, a skills video or a highlight video, depending on the sport, um, that's going to be the initial way that most college coaches identify you or able, able to evaluate you as a student athlete. Again, they're, they're not typically going out to these tournaments or showcases or even camps for that matter, trying to just evaluate and identify players. It would be very difficult for them to do so when you go to a tournament and there might be a hundred teams there. There might be a thousand players out there playing on 10 or 15 different fields or a hundred different courts. We're talking basketball or volleyball. Um, they can't just go out and say, well, I'm, I'm hopefully going to find someone I want to take a look at here today. So they need that video. They need a skills video or a highlight video beforehand to determine, is this someone who, who I want to go watch in person? Um, and following up from that, you know, if, if you do happen to see coaches at an event, you know, send them a follow-up, try and get feedback from them, try and get some uh, critique from them on, on the video. What what do you think I need to improve upon? What do you think I can do better? You know, that's the way you kind of start a dialogue, but it's going to be initially with that video in the vast majority of cases that a coach is able to identify and evaluate you as someone they want to come watch in person. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a big concern if you're going out and playing in tournaments or going to all these camps and it's the end of the summer for you and you're heading into your junior year and you know, you're not hearing anything from those coaches, right? That's a concern. So the more that you can do to put yourself in a good position heading into the spring, heading into the summer seasons, the club tournaments, the travel tournaments, any camp showcases you're doing, that's where you want that hopefully cash in. So that come again, June 15th or September 1st, when these coaches can start calling you, your phone's blown up a little bit, your email's blown up a little bit. That's what you want. That's a really good sign that coach is prioritizing you as a potential recruit. Uh, for the junior class, it's it's going to be really, really kind of in the thick of things. Um, by now, you're hopefully in communication with coaches. Um, you've hopefully had some conversations. You are starting to maybe narrow down some options and taking some visits potentially to some schools, whether that be an unofficial visit, which is a way for student athletes and families just to go to a, a campus or go check out a team or a program uh, or an official visit in which the university or the school, the program is paying for you to come there. But junior year, Kyle, is really an important piece where hopefully by now you're starting to kind of narrow down the communication, the options that you've had, and really starting to hone in on a few schools that are going to be hopefully a good fit for you and for schools that have hopefully identified you as a good fit for their program. Yeah, just exactly is the same way coaches are narrowing it down on there. And hopefully you guys have a wide list of schools, maybe 50, maybe 100, maybe less than that. But uh, hopefully you're doing the same thing on your end. You're gauging, is this a college coach that's actually interested in me? If it's someone who's on my list, but I've emailed them, uh, I've called them, I've done everything I can. They, I've sent my video to them. 
and have not gotten a response from them, it's someone you can probably kind of take off your list at this point, maybe revisit down the road, but they're probably not going to start gaining interest at this point if they haven't already. Um, so this is for you as a student athlete, as a family, to gauge who's interested in me, where does it seem like I can go play, uh, do, are they looking for my roster spot? What's my communication been like with those coaches at this program? And you can kind of gauge and get, narrow it down to a solid list of maybe five, 10 schools, 15 schools, whatever it may be. And again, before you start paying thousands of dollars going all over the country on unofficial visits, trying to check out schools, hoping you're going to meet a coach there or hoping that you're going to get recruited as just by going on an unofficial visit, make sure that you're taking your unofficial visits in the right direction the schools that you've already had contact with you commuted with the coach and you guys know you're going to be have time to meet up and go through a tour or get to know that coach a little bit better official visits that's going to be a little bit more from that college coach's end and they're going to invite you to come to an official visit those are starting september 1st of junior year uh, so again do your due diligence on the front end and this is the time to start being a little more discerning about what steps you're going to take and what direction i may be going with my decision yeah, and if you're a junior right now and you're at square one in the process, that's okay as well. Again, your options may be limited a little bit or you're going to have to be that much more aggressive in attacking this process. Uh, but there's still a ton of opportunity out there. And we'll talk a little about the seniors here in a second as well. But if you're a junior right now and you're at square one in recruiting, um, there's a lot that you need to do. You need to get caught up because, again, for the past seven, eight months, kids in your class have already been doing things. They've been getting contact. They've been having conversations Again, some kids in our network are starting this recruiting process early as seventh or eighth grade in some cases. So if you're a junior and you're at square one, it's go time. It's time to really get aggressive with this process and attack it, but also be realistic about the opportunities that may be out there. A lot of division one schools, they're done with their seniors and they're really focusing in on finalizing the junior class already, depending on the sport, depending on the type of school. So you may have to be more realistic and more open about where you're interested in going or the division level or keeping your options open at this point is going to be very important. But again, if you're a junior and you're really at square one in the recruiting process, let's get a move on and get after it. Start taking the initiative, reaching out to schools, getting video out there, getting your profile out there, really starting to take that uh, that ownership of this process, take the bull by the horns here, because otherwise this is really kind of your last summer, last spring of getting a chance to be seen by coaches before your senior year hits. So been really important time here uh, for the juniors. Um, Kyle, we've talked about uh, the underclassmen seniors at this point. You know, they're two, three months away from graduating from high school. Um, hopefully by now, they're in a good spot. Again, a lot of seniors have signed their national letter of intent. They've made that decision. They've been kind of relaxing and enjoying their senior year, but there are a lot of seniors at this point that are still undecided. They haven't made that decision or they're still looking for opportunities. What's your advice here for seniors knowing that, again, we're talking three, four months here, they're graduating, and then five, six months from now, college is already starting for them. So, so where do you go here for a senior? Yeah, if you're one of those seniors right now, just give up. Just just quit. Just shut it down. You guys, are, I'm, I'm 100% just kidding. There's absolutely still opportunity out there for those seniors. Even at this point in March of your senior year, there's still time. There are still college coaches in our network every day that are looking for the 2022 class. Um, you're going to have to be – much more open to your opportunities. You're going to have to be much more open to travel across the country. It's going to be a lot of Division three NAI junior college type of opportunities here at this point for the senior class, uh, which is still good. There's nothing wrong with going and playing a Division three NAI or junior college, especially if you, have, if you have aspirations of trying to get to a Division two or Division one school. Junior college is a great opportunity for you, and there are absolutely co coaches who are um, looking for student athletes right now. And if you're open to those opportunities, if you're open to travel, if you're open to going and playing somewhere that you're maybe unfamiliar with, um, there are going to be coaches looking for you. There are going to be places where you can go play and continue your athletic career and hopefully still get a little bit of money to pay for college as well, which is ultimately our, our ultimate goal is to uh, hopefully use sports to further our academic career. So just be open this time at this point. You need to be making phone calls directly to college coaches to see if they have any options, any opportunities left for this 2022 senior class. And that's going to be the main way is just to really canvas every coach that you possibly can at this point and be very open to your options. Yeah, or even open to walking on at a school. You know, 46% of Division One athletes are, are walk-ons. So that's another option that you can have. Again, a walk-on is someone who's not necessarily getting a scholarship to be on that team, but the coach is inviting them uh, to, to join the team pretty much still paying their way through school. Maybe they're getting some academic money, but nothing's coming in 
uh, from the athletic side. Um, in, in February, um, college coaches, what they ultimately do is they send us their roster openings. So coaches will submit information to us based on the roster openings they're looking for. We received about 19,000 roster openings from coaches in February. And a good majority of those are still looking for seniors. Again, most of those schools are more so going to be your D3s, your NAIs, your junior colleges, maybe some D2s, some D1s are still looking. So that's also really important if you're a senior, knowing what schools are still looking for recruits. Because if you're sending out emails to coaches or you're trying to get in touch with coaches that are done recruiting the senior class, you're ultimately spinning your tires. You're putting in work and you're not going anywhere. So that's important to know. So again, that's a big part of the NCSA profile. Um, if you don't have an NCSA profile or you're looking to, to get one started up, certainly reach out to us uh, with our seniors. You know, we, we do a lot to get them pushed in the right direction. We have discounted memberships for families that are looking for that additional help. But again, those roster openings are really a huge benefit to be able to identify, all right, these 27 coaches are looking for someone still who runs the 100 meters. That's my event. Let's see if I can maybe get into that program. So again, if you're a senior at this point and you're, you're not done with the recruiting process, uh, there's still hope. But again, you have to be aggressive. You have to be assertive in that process. And you have to be open and targeting the right schools, the right fits, and not just you know, blindly sending out information to college coaches. But Kyle, I think that's a really important piece, but also I think a huge benefit of our network is, again, having access to those roster openings and being able to be uh, smart with who you're reaching out to, especially this late in the process. Absolutely. I mean, it's an old adage that I've never really been all that good at. Work smart, not hard. Um, yeah, last thing you want to be doing here in your senior year when you have so so little amount of time is, is to be working harder than you need to be and not going anywhere, just spinning your tires and staying in the same spot. So using our network, you know, using our resources with our recruiting coaches, um, using our, our network of, of roster openings and um, having a more direct line to these college coaches is definitely going to be what you need because at this point, it's all about efficiency when you have so little time. I, I would say it's it's all about efficiency when it comes to recruiting in general, no matter where you're at in the process, because your high school kids, you have school, you have homework, you have friends, you have your sports practice games. Um, so there's efficiency to be said at all times in the recruiting process. And our network is the best tool out there that exists to help you being efficient in, in targeting the right schools and moving in the right direction. But as a senior, when it's do or die right now, we don't really have too time to be inefficient. So uh, take advantage of our network. Let us know if you guys are still looking to help. Yeah. So again, whether you're a freshman, whether you're a senior, wherever you're at in the recruiting process, there's action steps that you can be taking. Upperclassmen, it's that much more important to be taking those action steps. Underclassmen, again, start start to think about these things. These are tips that are going to help you down the road, right? May not pay off right away. You're not going to all of a sudden start a profile with NCSA and have 75 offers from college coaches. But again, you're planting the seeds that are hopefully going to be growing, you know, blossoming into beautiful plants two, three years down the road. So, um, again, that link uh, is, is in the, the chat there at the bottom, but check it out. Um, again, a ton of great information that we're providing. And if you're looking anything specific about your student athlete, reach out to us. This is what we do, helping families have these conversations and setting them in the, the right direction. But we've got a, a few questions rolling in here, Kyle. So let's get to, uh, to some of these. We're going to start. Uh, with Kevin, we talked about the importance of starting this process early as a freshman, being able to do that. Kevin wants to know, is freshman year the earliest the student athlete should start taking the steps? Does it make sense to do it any earlier than that? Seventh, eighth grade, we talked about some student athletes in our network can, can get profiles seventh, eighth grade once you're 13 years old. So kind of a case by case situation, Kyle, but certainly the earlier, the better. Yeah, absolutely. The earlier, the better. I mean, if you're starting freshman year, you're in good shape, but um, I, I certainly wouldn't deter most student athletes from starting their recruiting process earlier than that as, as an eighth grader, even seventh grader in some scenarios, it's going to be dependent on the student athlete. One is the student athlete hundred percent committed to playing at the collegiate level. Is this something they're very serious about uh, trying to do and trying to attempt? And yeah, obviously things can change in the future. There's nothing set in stone and, and student athletes change their minds and they, um, you know, they, they're unsure about things. Uh, that's, that's okay. That's life in general. No, there's no such thing as real certainty other than death and taxes in life. Uh, but if there's something they're very serious about and they're playing at a fairly high level, they're playing you know, with an organized team or travel ball, um, something outside of just like rec sports. Um, yeah, it's definitely a good time to get started with this as an eighth grader because it's only going to put you in a better position 
moving forward from there. It's only going to put you in a better position for your future rather than waiting, seeing if this is something that might be viable and kind of feeling it out. All of a sudden it's senior year and I do want to play in college. I've done nothing. Now we're really playing from behind. There's still options at that point. Uh, it's just going to be a lot more difficult and there's going to be a lot less options two or three years down the road. All right, question from Tori. How should college athletes go about wanting to enter the transfer portal? Uh, first and foremost, I think it's a conversation that that student athlete needs to have with their current coach. Once you enter the transfer portal, that is public information to other coaches. So that coach is going to see that. Um, so I think first and foremost, make that decision. Again, a lot of student athletes that will enter the transfer portal um, will then have the opportunity to start talking with coaches. So again, you want to, I think, do the decency of having that conversation with the current program. And then once you put your name into the transfer portal, that'll open up the opportunity for coaches to contact you, for you as a student athlete to start contacting college coaches. And the transfer portal is becoming uh, more and more popular these last few years, especially with some of the recent tweaks the NCAA has made in the recruiting rules about not having to uh, sit out a year, um, giving student athletes the ability to be eligible to play right away. But again, have that conversation, I would say, with your current coach. And then once you enter the transfer portal, that's going to hopefully open up some conversations with some other programs. Um, we got a bunch of questions here, so let's kind of whip through these. Kyle, I'll turn to you for this one from, uh, this is from Marlissa. Uh, what's the best way for a junior college athlete to transfer to a four-year school after one year? When can coaches respond to the player after reaching out to them? Yeah, there's really not much in the way of restrictions for college coaches with junior college student athletes. I, I have a sister who plays some junior college softball. My, my thought was to her that while she's still in her senior year of high school, he should be writing to four-year schools, letting them know that she's going to be going to this junior college. Uh, it's something to continue maintaining contact with them. At the very least, if, especially if you're trying to transfer after your first year at a junior college, which is very tough, you need to be taking care of that in the summer leading into your freshman year, in the fall of your freshman year at that junior college, to get on those coaches' radars and let them know you're looking to transfer and seeing if they have availability for, for junior college transfer, seeing if that's something that they're open to or looking for, because not every college coach – is going to fit in that box that every coach is going to want a junior college to transfer. So just like everything else, earlier is better. Don't wait to see if you can transfer to another school. Yeah, there's ultimately no restrictions for a junior college athlete. So first day of your junior college, again, you can start contacting coaches. Coaches can contact you, so uh, the better you can be there. Um, let's go with Crystal. We sort of touched on this one, but um, when you say an athlete profile, which platform are you speaking of? which do you suggest? Obviously, we're incredibly biased, but we also are the largest network in the country. Um, again, we received 19,000 plus roster openings from college coaches. So coaches trust us, but ncsasports.org is a great place to go. Uh, you can start building your recruiting profile. Think of it like a LinkedIn for college coaches and student athletes, where student athletes are able to build that resume, have their athletic, their academic information, their video, uh, have all that accessible to coaches. Coaches then come into our network to search athletes based on the criteria they're looking for. So if they're looking for a, a keeper in the 2023 class who has at least a 3.5 GPA or lives in the Southeast, whatever criteria they're looking for, they're able to search that information in our network. So uh, ncsasports.org, great place to start. Give us a call. Um, that's something that we can do. Kyle, I'm going to let you answer this one. This is another one from Kevin. That's a good one. Can parents contact D1 or D2 coaches even when student athletes can't themselves? We talked about the recruiting restrictions that coaches have for freshmen and sophomore student athletes that applies to parents as well. Yeah, exactly. It does apply to parents as well in the exact same way, Kevin. It's it's a recruiting family. Um, they're not able to have contact with Division One coaches. The rules in some sports even extend past that, like softball and lacrosse, where the college coaches cannot even have contact with the high school student athletes' coach or travel coach. They're not able to have any sort of contact with them either about recruiting. So it uh, can be very strict in that sense. In that same vein, though, if you're a college coach, if you're you know, looking to recruit a student athlete, you're going to want to hear from that student athlete directly. So as a parent, absolutely be helping your student athletes with their recruiting, be helping them with putting together an introduction email and follow-up email and conversations. Lord knows my mom was sitting behind me every conversation I had with the college coach, guiding me through that, helping me through that conversation. But uh, for a coach, they want to hear from that student athlete directly because at the end of the day, yeah, they're recruiting everybody. They're recruiting you as a parent as well, but ultimately the student athlete's going to be one going to that school. So help that student athlete in putting that communication together to that coach. And they can, like we said, they can be reaching out to those coaches. They just can't be having any sort of communication in either comparison. 
All right, we got two more questions we're going to take here. This one's from Heather. Um, haven't gotten a verbal commitment yet for my senior, but personal messaging still going on with two D3 coaches. When is a good time to ask if she is on the radar and how should she phrase, are you still interested in recruiting me without being too forward? Um, let's two box this if we can, Jim. Um, Kyle, I think now is the good time to ask if, if you're still on the radar. Um, again, this late in the game, you need to, you need to have a reality in terms of, am I someone that's going to be recruited? Are you seriously pursuing me? Or should I be pursuing other opportunities as well? Um, Kyle, how would you maybe more uh, kindly phrase that to a college coach? But it's safe, I would say, to be that assertive that you need to know, hey, where do I stack up? Is this is this a lost cause for me at this point? Or or should I still be talking with you and pursuing this? Absolutely. It's not time to beat around, <laughs> excuse me, to beat around the bush and uh, be careful with our words. It's you, We can be you know, very um, respectful in how we ask, but I would say something along the lines of, um, are you still interested in me as a prospect? Are you still, am I still someone that you are considering for your 2022 roster upcoming season? Um, where are you at for, um, you know, third baseman in that class? You know, am, am I still looking, uh, or am I still someone you're looking at? You can be pretty frank and pretty direct about that um, and see where they're at. And most coaches, they'll be pretty honest and let you know if they're not interested, they don't want to hinder you from getting opportunities. So they'll probably let you know. No, we, we've kind of moved on from your class at this point. Uh, that'll give you a good indication. So, you know, email first. If you don't hear anything back, call first. If you don't hear anything back, we can maybe kind of take a hint. Like every girl that I've ever talked to, when they don't talk, call you back, or they don't text you back or email you back, you can kind of take a hint. True story. Uh, now, last question we're going to take is from Doris. Uh, Doris has a, a son. He's a junior. I had a great freshman and sophomore year. Uh, film and football tore his ACL the first week of spring break his junior year, which of course uh, was a season ending injury for him. Um, he's back in the field now playing soccer, uh, but we feel like we have to wait for film his senior year. Um, so assuming he's getting recruited for football or wants to be recruited for football, Kyle, what's the best approach here when you kind of have that injury that costs you an entire season? You don't want to wait too long, but at the same time, um, you know, you don't want to send video that's also too kind of old. So what, what suggestion here do you have for Doris? Yeah, one of the very few positives that have come out of the lockdowns over the last two years and um, sports being canceled and events being canceled has been the emergence of skills videos. For a football player in this scenario, college coaches are much more open to skills videos at this point. So if he's back healthy and he's play, you know, able to play and able to go full, full go, work on a skills video, get his team together, some buddies together, go out and film some uh, skills of him doing whatever he does, whatever position he is, and try and get that in college coaches' hands now so he, they can at least see him. They can at least get on his radar. Uh, he can get on their radar and start seeing kind of where he might fit in and maybe developing some communication around where they're at for his position and for his class. So that's one thing you can be doing right now is getting together some skills video to see if they, they'd be interested in him at this point. Yeah, I think it's still okay to put together if you have film from the sophomore year and it seemed like you had a good season. Include that as well. That'll at least give them an idea of the kind of student athlete or, or player he is on the field. Um, maybe look into some seven-on-seven -seven stuff this spring or summer. That might give you another opportunity to just get him back in the, in the groove of football and even getting some, some film of that could, again, give coaches a, a glimpse into uh, who he is as a student athlete but also as a, a potential recruit as well. But, again, co coaches go through this. They understand that kids get hurt. They miss some season. So it will take a little bit more activity, I think, on your end. But uh, our website, again, ncsasports.org, has each sport broken down by what coaches are looking for when it comes to videos, whether it's a skill video and drills and, you know, practice type stuff, uh, more highlight video. There's so much great information on there uh, as well. So, again, appreciate the questions. Always, uh, always some great ones there. Um, so if we didn't get to any of your questions, again, reach out to us, message us individually. Uh, we'd be more than happy to reach out and give you a call and talk about your student athlete and uh, hopefully make sure that you guys are, are on the right path here wherever you, you are in that recruiting journey. So uh, as we always do, we're going to wrap things up by honoring some of our uh, recent NCSA commits. So we uh, ring a bell internally uh, in our office when uh, we get that kind of call and that decision. So Kyle, we'll start with you on the tennis courts. Awesome. Yeah, our first commit today is Andrew Fang headed to Binghamton University. Andrew, it's a very high level tennis athlete, um, incredibly proactive with his recruiting profile, had over 90 views from college coaches. Um, the incredible stat, the incredible number, number from Andrew, he had over 294 emails opened by college coaches. 
not just by you know low level you know rinky dink nobody coaches to call our programs not to say that, that any are but you know high level programs he was getting emails open by villanova's virginia tech uh, vanderbilt uh university of southern california georgetown notre dame uh, this is a very high level student athlete who had great grades was a great tennis player still is a great tennis player obviously but he was incredibly proactive in the recruiting process and really made his own success. So congrats to you, Andrew. Best of luck to you heading to Binghamton. Binghamton Bearcats out of the American East Conference. The old Bearcats. All right, let's hit up the volleyball courts here. Bailey Brashier. Brashier? Brashier? Brashier. Brashier. Brashier? We're going with Brashier. Bailey Brashier, a uh, student athlete from Kentucky. This is a uh, Kind of a good one for someone that maybe started the process a little bit later, at least with NCSA. They signed up with us uh, just seven months ago as she was uh, in her senior season, uh, getting things going. They'd had some contact, a little bit of interest in recruiting, but things really picked up once they got rolling with NCSA. Um, she logged into her profile 159 times. Again, think about that over a seven, eight month window. Profile was viewed by 250 coaches. 66 coaches were following her. So again, that happened in a six, seven, eight month window. So again, if you are a junior, it's not too late. If you're a senior, there's still opportunity out there, but you got to be aggressive. You got to be uh, proactive here. I had a bunch of division ones interested in her as well. Um, actually, was a, obviously a pretty high level player there. You see her at the net um, ended up committing to Quinnipiac University in Connecticut out of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, Quinnipiac, the Bobcats, Kyle. Quinnipiac, known for their hockey, uh, for this volleyball player, and their uh, polling, their presidential polling, Quinnipiac. Uh, awesome. Our last uh, last commit for today is Christopher Davis, Christopher Davis CJ. He's at uh, Heidelberg University in Ohio. He's actually out of Michigan, so going a little bit south for him. Um, student athlete that signed up with NCSA in June of 2021. So just going back to last year. Um, talk about efficiency. He's one of those student athletes who was a little bit behind in the process going into his senior year, is now committed in, uh, in March of his senior year. So in very little time, was able to be very proactive in his recruiting, um, get himself caught up, and is headed to Heidel Heidelberg University, um, who are the uh, – what, what was the name, the logo, the Prince? Something Prince. The something Princes. Um, but I, I can only think of Heidelberg from uh, – the Night at the Opera, Mark's Brothers movie, where there's a sword fight and they keep seeing Remember remember Heidelberg. And they are the student prince. Student prince. Student prince. What so a nickname. They learn something new every day. What a nickname. The Heidelberg student prince. Remember Heidelberg. Shouldn't that be plural, the student princes or something? I would think so. That's confusing. Uh, awesome. We appreciate the questions. Congratulations to all the commitments and... Uh, and all the comments that we haven't recognized uh, either. Again, any questions you have, uh, any information you're looking for, go to our website, ncsasports.org, reach out to us. Um, we've got a, a team of hundreds of uh, people here to help assist student athletes and families throughout the process and um, why we exist to, to try to make this process as smooth and easy as possible. So um, for Kyle Winters, I'm David Kamisek. We're back every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central time. So hopefully we'll see you back here next week. And I hope you guys have a great March. Enjoy March Madness, St. Patrick's Day, all the fun stuff coming up. Uh, this month, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.